I haven't finished eating yet. So I'm gonna make an executive decision and put another song on so I have time to finish eating. Dinner, I don't even have time for dinner. Are you joking me? Are you kidding me? I have an apple. This is what I have to do. I'm in such a, I've been working all morning, coaching all morning, prepping for stream, and I have to video edit and crap, and all I have time is for an apple. This isn't dinner, I don't have time for dinner. So I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna eat my apple, I'm gonna get some ice water, and you guys are gonna have to listen to another song, okay? Suck it up. I'm obese, shoot me in the belly. Look at all the space I'm creating, everybody. Bad, bad monkey, bad monkey. Oh, you got your baited so hard. I don't think I can handle any more of this bot gameplay. Spylo. All right, bots, I'm back. I finished my apple. I even got a little bit of water because I was cutting myself some slack recently and we're back. So let's check Twitch chat really fast. Hello, Baggins, Locky, good to see you. Sna uh, snacky stir, hello. Hello, Dragonfly, not first, but that's okay. Who is Spilo? In math, my solution. In history, my king. In art, my... <sighs> okay, sim, exactly. Um, Zepri, hello. Uh, enjoy my dinner. Yeah, yeah, we already responded to that one. Um, sorry, but who asked Spilo? Okay, listen to me, Stinktra. A little pips pipsqueak. Poop. I, I, you have the audacity to come into my Twitch chat and talk trash. Yo, okay. Let's uh let's uh let's let's do this. Um let, let's do this. Shut up, Baggins. Shut up, Baggins. Shut up, Baggins, shut up, Baggins, shut up, Baggins, shut up, Baggins, shut up, Baggins. Let's get started. So today will be 
old school Spilo stream. We do two roast reviews. Uh, I think yes, maybe. Um, and then we go from there. Is it two roast reviews? Yes. 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 Let's get the replay quotes pulled up. Two roast reviews, hammer time, and I'm not sure what else. We might just call a stream there. To be honest with you all, I've got a lot of little things that we're working on behind the scenes. I was able to meet with Baggins and a couple other mods last night, um, Neo and the gang, and we caught up, came up with some good ideas. I worked through all the feedback forms. I'll be announcing the winners of the coaching drawing today. I've already messaged the winners themselves, but I will announce that today. Um, along with any future plans and any potential adjustments. Why am I putting in my earbuds? I don't need to put in my earbuds. It's a roast review. I don't care if you guys hear it echo. Don't give a, just don't give a fart. So I really need to come up with a better expletive than that. It makes me sound like I'm 12 years old. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Um, replay code, replay code, replay code. Re <laughs> 4th. 4th. Let's do claws. Claws, are you here? I know it's late for you, Australia. I also started stream late. I'm sorry, I had some stuff I had to catch up on. I feel really bad. We've been playing like telephone with our timing of the reviews. It's obnoxious. Um, where, where where is Twitch chat? Why do I not have my phone pulled up? Hello. Twitch chat. Twitch chat. Twitch chat. Ah! Thank you for the sub, whoever you may be. It is. It is. It is. It is. Nodlin, thank you for the sub. Three months. Appreciate it, mate. You let it expire? Well, no wonder I've been starving for the last few weeks. Um Okay, let, let's 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 not waste any more time. Let's quickly look over the the the, the, the blah blah the coaching form. Claws, you live in Australia, so it'll be quite late. Da, 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 da. Uh classic rose, six hundred and fifty hours come what the heck, dude? It's a lot of hours. 3k your diamond to gain further understanding of the game. I love all the little things that will help you play better. 8.5 hours of sleep. Zari off tank. Okay. Diamond off tank. 30 minute gameplay review. Understanding and mechanics to work on aggression versus peeling in Overwatch as well as positioning. Okay. So this is. This is. We're going. Wait. Is this a Doomfist VOD? Surely no. Sigma. Sigma and Diva. Good to see you. Hey, I wish I could say the same. No, I'm just kidding. Good to see you, Jay. It's been a long time, mate. Hope you're doing well. Let's uh, let's change this to off tank. Thanks for the sub, mate. I appreciate it. To over two years now, and I'm still have a full head of hair somehow. Let's update the command. Command, hello, kitty. Edit commands. Commands. Edit. Vod. Diamond off tank sub to get Spilo more apples says the person who's not a subscriber Sub isn't good enough for you. I want I want your um... Any questions feel free to type them here or in twitch chat Okay Okay, let's uh so the goal is the understanding. I looked over your form. I uh, don't really see anything terribly negative that stands out of your form. Um, the only thing I would say is that there wasn't a lot of information on like your typical training week, but look seems okay. Uh, make sure that you're playing, sticking with your hero pool. Uh, be consistent with your training. We could try and train every day. The rest of that we'll go over in the post coaching checklist, so you don't you don't need to be here. So let's let's talk about positioning. Let's talk about um, the role of tank. So. So, to work on aggression versus peeling in Overwatch. Okay, so here's here's the thing with off tank. Here's the thing with off tank. So off tank in Overwatch Two is really not a lot has changed. Like you are still playing essentially with the intention of creating space by either playing personally aggressive for like I want to take space, I want to do things my way, or you're doing so in a way that enables other people. There's not a lot changed. I don't want to even look at Doomfist if you only play it for one fight. Okay, so. With Sigma, the way you do this is you can help your team by looking like taking denying a longer sight line or denying off angles. So in other words, if I'm playing Sigma on Hollywood and I'm going all the way up to here, okay, we win the resource trade here. 
I make sure that this Hanzo can't stay high ground. How do I do that? I shoot them. I shoot them a lot. And if I shoot them, he leaves the high ground and then we're able to take space as a result. Not only does that allow my team by helping my team, but it's also a selfish thing because the problem, the thing with off tank a lot of the time is yes, you can shoot the enemy tank, but if you really want kills, you're often end up gonna shooting the off angle, okay? Where's Seth the hammer? Oh, I'm not sure, honestly. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how we treat this fight here. Sigma is the more ranged option. So if you're picking Sigma, you're picking it either because you're a Sigma OTP and you like Sigma, or you're picking it because the, the map has long sight lines slash you're running into a lot of uh, spam threats. Zarya doesn't have good range, doesn't have good ways of dealing with spam threats. D.Va does, but D.Va would do better uh, if the sight lines are short. So D.Va actually would be pretty good in this map, um, whereas Sigma does better when the sight lines are long. So let's, let's see how it does. I lost him. Oh, I lost him, he's gone forever. Okay. <laughs> Too much shield breaking. That does that actually doesn't accomplish much of anything. Um, I'm actually change this to eight or seven because we don't need this to be. Okay. So like right here, your shield allows your team to take space, so that's great. But your team didn't need shield that long, right? So you'd already walked through the choke. Your Hans are already taken angle. You don't need to waste your shield resource afterwards. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that shield nine times out of ten. Well, eight times out of 10 is probably gonna be used selfishly to allow you to take space. If you can take space as an off tank, you will indirectly pu push the enemy team into a position where they can no longer threaten your team. In other words, if you can walk forward as Sigma, then what will happen is you will start denying the angles and space that are actually threatening to your team. You don't directly need to shield your team. You need to use the shield for you so you can hurt the enemy team. And by hurting the enemy team, they can no longer hurt your team. Syncdra. About time, but I want life savings. We discussed this, okay? Okay, good. Walking forward, you can shift this, is, baby. Very awkward use of your cooldowns here. Yeah, so th this this is this the best way to describe this is incredibly incredibly awkward. Okay, this is like this is like uh, this is like the junior prom going on right here. Okay, so. A lot of shield used for really no purpose whatsoever. So about 200 of that shield was wasted. You spam out the Genji, you're aware that the Genji's low. You rock, okay, but he still has shield, so it ends up not doing anything. Did, um, does that Genji just not eat the rock? What the heck, dude? I'm sorry, what is this chat? Oh, he got so lucky. Okay, so... You get a little bit unlucky, you, you get a little bit unlucky, but also he still, still had shield, so that doesn't end up working out. So then he's got no shield. You throw a volley into Sigma shift, that sucks. You turn around, but there's nobody behind you, so I don't, I don't really understand why you're turning around here. You shift late after you've lost 130 HP. Miss a shot. Miss a shot, essentially. Now you're standing out in the open. You get rocked. You're still standing out in the open. Now you're down to the rock hits, but at this point the fight's already lost. So to be frank with you, we could talk a little bit about your shield management early fight. We could talk a little bit about your rock, but a lot of this just is just typical clunky Sigma gameplay. One fight, it's not a lot to read off of. That is the danger chat of sending in a VOD where you play different heroes. Is it some of this? Oh no. Oh, that was just a disaster. You shifted when he had rock. He probably should have rocked you, but then you're caught out isolated, and then you look down on the ground, and then you mess up your shield. I mean, can we just admire this shield? This is this is atrocious. What is this? Like, like did you just you shield you, you threw your shield on the, for your feet? Like, what? I get that's the one exposed part of your body, but you got to be kidding me, bro. Like, what? This does nothing. So, I don't know. This is just. <sighs> This isn't pretty, y'all. This is this there's this isn't pretty. This is really quite ugly. And again, I just don't like how much shield we're using for no particular space. Like, here you go. What does the shield really accomplish? Are you doing anything with the shield? Like, and by this I mean this shield right here. Really, what 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 is, what is this shielding? 
Here's the thing with Sigma Shield, okay? Sigma Shield, you have to keep in mind, you only have 700 shield. So if you're using shield to just block general spam, like this right here, right? Maybe a couple Genji Shurikens, maybe some Sigma spam. Does that spam actually matter? Seriously, think about it. No, it doesn't. Because guess what? Those kills, those that spam is not going to lead to any kills 99 times out of 100. So then the goal with shielding is to block serious amounts of damage, serious amounts of cooldowns, or to prevent you from dying. None of those things are going to happen right now. None, not a single one. You don't even have a Hanzo peeking here looking to spam down here. The Hanzo's already back. So there's no reason for you to be shielding this. So what do you do? You shield to block a little bit of early spam, but remember, your shield is a lot easier to shoot than you are. So even though you're thinking, oh, this is blocking damage that might be put on me. Well, first off, you're a tank. You don't care about taking a little bit of spam damage. If you were, let me, let me put it this way. If you sat here and you were 350 or 400 HP right now, it wouldn't matter. You get healed right back up to full almost instantly, right? And then what does that mean you can do? Well, it means you have a full shield so that then you can walk through the choke, shield the actual cooldowns and real damage of the Hanzo, your HP goes back to full, and then you drop shield, and you start to manage your shield and your HP. But the reason why your shield is less, is more important than, listen to me, chat, your shield is more important than your HP because you can heal your HP, you can't heal your shield. Now your shield does regenerate, but at a significantly slower rate, significantly slower rate. So you taking damage now isn't the end of the world because they're not cooldowns, it's just general spam, and it's not, and it's, and it's healable. The other thing you have to consider, like I said as well, is that your shield is easier to break than you are. So for example, if I walk through this choke, your shield took how much damage? It went from 700 to, to, to 170, so it took 530 damage. I promise you, if you were to walk from here to here, right? Do you think that you would take 530 damage walking from here to here? No, because it'd miss all the shots. Your shield is fat, stupid, and easy. You are not. Well, maybe. So, take damage, shield relevance. Take damage, shield relevance. It's a lot like defense matrix, right? It's a lot like defense matrix in the same way, okay? So, you are now actively taking space, but you had no shield. And now you're doing it again, right? But the problem is, is because you wasted so much shield earlier, you're already down to 320 shield. So, and, and not only that, but you're actually standing still. You're, do, you're doing this for some random spam. That doesn't matter. You need to be taking space. Now, I'm not saying always push as Sigma, but versus this, there's no reason for you not to be. Push, walk forward to this corner. Spam, 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 spam. Charge shield, walk forward to this corner. Spam, 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 and we go from there, right? Okay. There's the, the window. You're down one. You probably should back out. Okay, good. Please, again, like, what? Wa why would you shield that? Why would you shield that? Why? There's nobody there. There's nobody there. You're just letting your shield break. Like right now, like like, like legitimately right now, there sh is zero reason for you to use your shield for anything. Stop right now and think what you're doing. Think what you're doing. Look at your HP. Look at your HP. And tell me what's just about to happen right now. You're 900 HP! 900! 900! And you just blew another 250 HP on your shield that's still not full for what? Nothing. You have 900 HP. And then you have the audacity after this to shift again. Why? You're still 760 HP. This is like this is like Scrooge level of miserly behavior.
900 or 760 apparently isn't enough for you. You have to use your cooldown for more, for more. But the problem is, is do you think in the next 10 to 11, 12 seconds that you're gonna wish that you had your shift? Probably, probably. So don't use it now. You Now you would like your shield. Why? Because you'd like to make sure that you have full shield to block a Sigma rock. You would like full shield just in case to block a Hanzo shot. You'd like full shield to, I don't know, the Genji dashes backline. You shield off their Sigma and you isolate him from healing and you kill the Genji. I don't know. Shield is more multi-purpose. Your HP does not. So, nice rock, idiot. And you're backing off. Why are you backing off? You have 930 HP. You're in Overwatch 2. You're a superhuman. You float. You've got laser lands and, 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 and a regenerative shield. And a, you can control gravity. And you're more than double your normal HP. And you're backing up because of a coalescence. Oh. Why did you not shield that? The one time you should have used shield. Oh, now we're nanoed. You've just been a non-factor. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I feel like we have to start from scratch with your Sigma, to be frank, because it just, you just don't, you just kind of exist and, and you don't, you don't use your cooldowns properly. You have a million HP. You, you, you just, you just exist. And now you're gonna die again. I don't know, G good morning, Neon. How is Sweetums doing? So, I know I'm kind of going all over the place right now, and this, this isn't I'm something I'm super pleased with either. Again, what? why? You block the rock, great job. Drop the shield. Drop the shield. You wasted 300 shield again off of nothing. You're just existing. You're just, you're just, you're just existing. You're not doing anything. You're not doing anything with your cooldowns. You're not even trying to land your rock. You're just kind of like, right? You're getting 900 HP and going, I have 930 HP, and then doing absolutely nothing with it. You don't know how to use your shield. You don't know anything. I feel like we have to start from scratch with you. I feel like we have to start from scratch. I'm going to do something different after this, to be honest with you. Again, do, do, you notice, do you notice what you're doing with your shield again? Again, why? Why are you shielding this? Why? Why? Are you scared of Sigma spam, BAP spam? Plot twist, chat. You can't block everything. You have to selectively choose what you block with Sigma. If you try to block everything, you will block nothing of consequence because by the time you actually want to take space or the enemy team wants to take space on you, you will no longer have the shield that you desperately need to block the cooldowns and burst damage and finishing blows that actually matter in the game of Overwatch. Ow, that hurt my hand. I don't know why. But thank goodness for you that blocked the one volley of Sigma Balls that we're probably not gonna hit anything. Why are you shielding this? Why are you shielding this? Are you shielding off the Hanzo that could one-shot your team? No, you're shielding nothing, nothing. What are you even shielding here? He's not even there anymore. Oh, like just your full HP, take some damage, then shield and block the rock or block the Hanzo. Just Please, 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 he almost got rocked again. Early shift after rock, sure, now you have resource. Surely we'll use our resource now. Surely, surely, no, we're gonna let our shield break again, doing nothing. <sighs> oh man, it's like, actually, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just, just flux, use it. Use the flux now, please use it. Just, just flux the Sigma, you got rocked. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is like a preschooler in the first day of school. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Oh, please rock him. Miss your rock. You miss your flow. Oh wow, we got the bap. Somehow we got the bap. You almost missed it entirely. Oh. I, I, I honestly think that a, a mercy planking with pistol would have created more space than you would have here. And done so more efficiently and quicker. Oh. Oh, this is this is this is tragic. Okay. Alright. They're on widow. Okay, so okay, there's a little bit of shield there. 
Needed to get out. Do you see what you did with shield there? See, you're not you're not a total moron. You're not a total moron, okay? There, there's there's brain. Oh, hello, cat. She just attacked me. Okay. There 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 is. See, you you shielded so that you could get out. You could move. That, that that's what the shield was there for, right? 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 <laughs> yeah. Your reaction speed. Okay. <laughs> I love it when two sigmas just kind of look at each other like that. I mean, you could have, if we're going to really break down the micro here, once you shift, just, just rock this sucker right now. Rock it. Cancel your own shift. Rock him. Smack him in the, smack him in the, smack him in the mup. I don't know what the mup is, but it sounds fun. Wow. Look at you. When you actually aim, you do well. Well, no, I said, I said mup, mup, mup. So you're sitting on cart. If you can at all avoid this, that would be optimal because I would really like you to sit on high ground. The thing with tanks is if you can put yourself in a position, the most powerful position on the map, then it becomes really impossible for the enemy team to get rid of you. For example, if your DPS want to control high ground, right? Right. Okay. So if you go high ground, then the enemy tank will not really be able to consistently clear you off of high ground. Maybe if they're running like a Reinhardt, maybe, right? But like this diva can just fly up and be like, no, nope, you're not going to high ground. And you're not really controlling space. You're controlling space on cart. Now I understand Overwatch 2, somebody has to push cart, somebody. But I look at your comp and I'm like, hmm. I don't know. I don't, I'm not blaming you here. I just have to say it. If you get the opportunity to leave cart here, I would do so. I would do so. I would definitely do so. Just keep in mind that you're missing a few folks. So, yeah. Uh -uh. Do not scratch. Why, why not rock her? I mean, I guess, but... Like, you have, a, have an opportunity to just rock the D.Va and completely shut it down. Why not do it? It's more of a misplay in the brig than anything else. Oh my goodness gracious. Zen should be in cart, right? Honestly, yeah, probably. If you guys could, Zen could be on cart or, or Mercy. Mercy could be in cart too. Um, there's, I mean, Zen doesn't necessarily want to be in cart either, but you don't really have any other good options. Oh, this is this is bad. Okay. Ah! Okay, we got it. We got it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna create a little juicy little checklist for you when we're done here. A little a little a little, a little juicer. If you will. Ah! Okay. And what we'll do is then I will I'm gonna literally cue into quick play and show you exactly what I mean. Only quick play because I don't want to play a full game. I wouldn't normally mind embarrassing myself in rank, but Well that was good. That was that was a great use of shift there. That 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 was really, 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 really well done. <sighs> to be honest with you right now, your biggest issues with Sigma is it just looks like you just don't play the hero a lot, to be honest with you. I don't know how much do you have played here. Should I have used ult here? I mean, no, I think you're okay, because you guys because you guys have the respawn advantage, so you're gonna be able to walk out anyway. Like you see here, like you're you're fine. Um You just you're just not doing anything. Like I don't know how to how to best put this, but like you it's it, there's this real danger that I re review sometimes with tank players and they just kind of like exist you know what I'm saying like we remember you guys remember we did the live coaching on the Winston where our Winston just wasn't like really get a kill get a kill right I, and I feel like that sometimes here too like I know you're like oh my mechanics aren't that good but but we've seen some moments right like right now what should you be doing what should you what should you be doing the way I look at it is that BAP or Ash 
or Moira need to die. And if they don't die, then they need to feel like they're going to die. So, but you go back to your team. I don't really know what you did there. And then you just kind of stand here and you're not controlling the off angle here. So then your Farah dies. And so now you're standing on main, you're shielding Widow. But what were you shooting there? Were you trying to shoot Widowmaker across the map? Obviously, you know you can't reach her, but it looked like you were trying to. So why? What, what's, what's up with that? Right? Look at this. Was that on BAP? Okay, well then you chunk that one. That's some bronze tier mechanics. You shift, you rock the lamp, and then you just flux, and you almost miss again. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it feels like for a diamond player, these these are this is not good mechanics. And by mechanics, I don't necessarily even mean like your ability to hit the shots. This isn't like you feel very lost. You feel very lost. Okay, so do we have any more Sigma? If not, ow! Stop biting my pet. Okay, if not, then I actually want to I want to jump to a game right now. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. The checklist with Sigma. Control a sight line and create space by denying and or killing that sight line. Use your shield and your cooldowns to do that effectively. Okay, that's it. You create space by denying a sight line or an angle on the enemy team because you're extremely potent 1v1er and especially at range. So, you are using your cooldowns randomly with no purpose towards controlling that sightline. You were just using them randomly. And then when you did get value out of the cooldowns, for example, like you got 930 HP. Okay, so do what does that mean? You've just, you've, you've added like what? I said double, but that's not true. You have added, what, 80%, right? You got like 80% more HP, 75, 80% more HP. And what did you do with it? Nothing. You didn't do anything. Sigma is not a good tank to peel with. He doesn't peel well. That's not what your job is. Your job is to shoot ranged threats or shoot squishies so that the dive threats don't have resources. If you're playing the peel, you need to pick a different character. I feel bad playing Sigma, so I'm just gonna not use my shield. I say that, I, it's, it's hard to break muscle memory, y'all. So disregard my mechanics this fight, or this game. I need to move my cat as well. Hey, sweet boy. Sorry, bud. Okay. Sigma's phenomenal at mid to long. Oh my gosh, chat. Oh my gosh, chat. Yes. 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 Do you see this? Let's go. Jeff Kaplan is under my desk currently right now rigging it. meant to be indeed fart 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 on the enemy team how does this by gravity no repulsors are to be detected i owe my gifts to the iris oh the iris of course we've met how fortunate for you I wonder if I have changed for the better <laughs> or worse. Change often comes uninvited. What you make of it is up to you. Reinhardt. Okay, so I have to keep him at distance. Spam control the sightline. Ah, kitty, my headphones. I can shift now. 
because I'll get it back to create space when I need it. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Just take damage. I don't care. There's no damage here that's relevant. There's Symmetra. Or is that on our team? Okay, there's Sojourn. That's serious damage there, so I need to watch out. Wait for my shield. We take space. I'm playing my range using cover. He's, there's the right click. There's the right click. Now I can take space. Did not, I should not have used the rock there. I needed to save it in case they push me. There's the magnetic grenade I blocked. See, I still have not used a lot of my shield because I haven't needed to. Move from corner to corner. If they push me now, I'm okay. So you see how I'm like, I'm not helping my team. Oh, I didn't block the magnetic grenade. This feels really bad. Ah, shoot, almost. But we're still gonna win the fight. So I'm using my shield as necessary to block cooldowns and or when I'm taking significant damage. Um, and then I, I'm trying to save rock for either when I want to go aggressive or when the enemy team wants to go aggressive on me Notice how I used rock the second time the first time was a bad use of rock But the second time I knew that Reinhardt was gonna push me, but if I have rock, it's gonna be really rough for him All right, so we can walk There's I don't care about the shield I go pat I ignore shields This is why I need shield wall, right? I'm actually at risk of dying now, so that's why I need shield. I can use shift now because there's no reason not to. Easy. Now this is gonna be hard, y'all. I'm not gonna lie with this hero. The, the high ground in this game makes it difficult. I'm gonna push up a little bit here. Ah, he juked me. That's my bad. I'm... Oh dear. So. <laughs> okay, I got egoed there. I egoed there with my shield early because I knew that my healer couldn't see me and I was like, I'm just gonna go for some early poke. So I, I greeted there and got punished for it. Oh, no way. I don't really want to walk forward here because we're down with you. Again, I'm not shooting shield. I'm going around shield. All right, as best I can. This is going to be hard versus a right here, but I have... I'm aiming behind his shield, so if he drops it... No! I got deleted! What happened? Was it a railgun headshot? Oh my gosh, I lost like 300 HP instantly. That's my bad. I got murked. Again, I don't care about Reinhardt. I'm all about cover. Oh, that, that's in this reading. That was weird. Survive until that wastes out. Now I can greed this. My team, there's no way. Okay, so we got somebody in cart so I can take high ground with my Symmetra. I oh shoot, I fell. That was a mistake in her end. <laughs> Did he just hit the... What happened? Did he hit the, um... No, no, no. This is where I'm gonna peel a little bit, but I probably should have gone for the Sojourn, honestly.
Why? Why? That was not a good Anna. I can't reach anything. She has a shot, but we win. I'm not gonna use ult here because we just win. So I'm always thinking like, what do I need shield for, right? Right here I don't need shield because we're gonna win this fight. So I'm just gonna make it life hard on that Reinhardt. Now I probably would be better served by not shooting that Reinhardt to be honest. There's a Reinhardt behind me I know, but I think I'm okay. I knew that shot was coming. I, I, I whiffed, rip chat. I whiffed, I trolled, worth. <laughs> okay, so this is where it's gonna be tricky again. We're gonna have a choke that I have to work my way through, so I really, really need to use my resources carefully. To be frank with you, Reinhardt is better picked than Sigma at this point. There, there's just not enough range on third point to really justify it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna patiently try and get a sightline where that Reinhardt can't see me. So I'm actually gonna flank here. Oh, I'm, I'm body blocked. Oh, I almost blocked the beat. There's a Lucio behind us. Is my Symmetra all right? Early shift here just for HP. Now I'm gonna use it. That was a window, so I had to back off either way. No way. No way! All right, we gotta back off. Maybe killable? At that point, I was just like, we might be able to stagger this one. He's gonna shatter. I forgot it was two seconds, the recall. I don't know if I can survive. Crud. Well, I mean, to be fair, like I said, the Sigma pick is pretty atrocious here. I really need to find a way to get past this Reinhardt and like actually control space. No, 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 no kitty. No kitty, no kitty, no. No, no kitty. No, no, no. This Lucy was just mauling us right now. Ah, that was a terrible shot. Okay. That Reinhardt should die. I'm not gonna get caught up in the Reinhardt, right? I'm gonna go control. This is what you should have been doing. Watch this, ready? I'm not, this is not gonna happen again. This little rat! This Ryan is actually pretty good. <laughs> is that horrible? I might just do this the snowball all oh, here. The reason why I did that is only because of the situation. We need the snowball here. I think we can. Ryan's gonna be here soon. I have to back off. He's not on me. Surely we win. Crud! 
Okay. <sighs> Crud, man. I chunked. I, I honestly... I probably didn't need to use Flux there at the end because I think that kill would have died anyway. We were up two. If we, but, yeah. Okay. Okay, so... The goal with Sigma is... Remember what I said. It's control a sight line. Control a sight line. Lost a fart, fart, fart. Control a sight line. Use your cooldowns to take space as much as you can. Now, if we go to your channel... If we go to your replay again and we look just even at the first fight, okay? Even just the first fight. Ready for battle. Just the first fight. How is this shield helping you take space right now? Me, this one I can understand at least a little bit because of the Hanzo. But again, always ask yourself, is this helping me take space or helping to defend space? Too much shield there. Shoot at the Genji. Rock, unfortunate. But do you notice your use of cover here? Not good enough use of cover. You don't actively need to be pushing into them right now. You have a resource trade. Play on the corner, right? So that will allow you to hold space better. Again, did you need to shield there? Look at your HP. Did you need to shield here? It's really important you have this shield just in case you get low or, 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 or you can, again, cycle things, right? So you let your shield essentially break. You're standing out in the open, and then that doesn't work. We'll go to the n one more team fight. Again, shield. Does this shield help you take space? Do, do you need it to take space? No. You could have shifted this, or even just walk forward and take a damage, and then gone three, two, one, shield the corner for the burst damage. Go to the next corner, drop shield and spam. Go to the next corner, place your shield for burst damage, drop shield and spam, and then use it to block relevant cooldowns. But this is what I'm talking about. You use your shield here, but you stand here. You don't take space with it. You don't do anything with it. You're not really controlling the sight line with it. Okay, now you're here. You get a fat shift. Nice. And what do you do with it? Now, I understand not peeking down here, but there's no reason for you not to peek out here, right? What if you take damage? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why are you shielding? Look at your HP. Why are you shifting? Look at your HP. Why are you shielding? Look at your HP. You see? That has to be the question that you're constantly asking yourself. Is I want to see... So just to make it as simple as I possibly can, Claws, I want to see Hello. more conscious management between your shield and your HP when you're taking or, or defending space. Okay? So with, the H, with the amount of gameplay that we got, that will probably help. Now, I will say this. This is concerning to me, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. I look at your form, and your form says Zarya, Sigma, Diva, whatever. But we have already seen Doomfist. We have seen Ball, which you said, oh, it's just a stall. But you had more than enough time to go hero other than ball you go ball with 45 seconds left after going monkey initially and then now you're playing Arissa. no wonder your mechanics will look clunky no wonder your mechanics look clunky now i am not a sigma main by any means but i have 34 hours in him right that's not that's not that's not nothing right so What's going on with your tank pool? That's a serious question for you. Um, and part of the reason why maybe your mechanics look clunky is the fact that you we have seen in your, you've seen Sigma, Ball, Doomfist. We've just saw a glimpse of Winston, which means that I assume that you play him some. And we're gonna see Arissa, and then we're also gonna see D.Va, and then you also put Zarya in your form. No, 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 no. Three tops four if you play a pretty decent amount. Otherwise, you're going to be mid at everything. How much Arissa do we have here? Do you guys want to see some Arissa coaching? It looks like we actually play Arissa for a few fights. Let's do, let's do a teeny bit of Arissa coaching. There's some D.Va. 
All right, so Claus, you're right here. Do you want Arisa coaching or do you want Diva coaching? I mean, I can do a little bit of both, but I don't want to waste time coaching Arisa if you're fixing the dumpster. And I know this is late for you. Started stream late. So your diva is better. Well, I don't care what's better. I want to know what you want coaching for. What, what, you, you, did you hear what I said with Hero Pool, right? Arisa, Diva, Sigma, Zarya, Doomfist, Wrecking Ball. You, you can't do this. You can't do this. Okay, we'll do Diva. Sorry, chat. Get RKO'd. Headache inducing, clicking forward, Diva time. Okay, well, hopefully we find one soon so that we can actually like step up your mechanics a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so, right, Diva's job, we've, we've done some videos on, is dive versus peel, right? Dive versus peel, creating space either by diving aggressively or peeling off um, enemies that are aggressing on you. And oftentimes where the nuance happens with Diva most of the time is you're not usually going to be doing one or the other. You're going to be doing something in between. So you will be diving the the Hanzo or contesting the Hanzo, not necessarily going for the backline, but because you know that that Hanzo is a risk threat to your backline. So by D.Va, you often end up peeling by diving, by threatening the things that threaten your team. It's the exact same thing with Sigma, but the difference is that Diva is better at closing the distance and getting in short range and utilizing high ground, where Sigma is better at keeping things at arm's distance. You guys saw how I fared against the Reinhardt. I really struggled versus the Reinhardt specifically, but I dominated all the other heroes. That's a great peel. That is what Diva is good at. Now, right now, you have to make... This is this is the moment of truth right now. You have to ask yourself in these moments... Should you be peeling or should you be pressuring right now? What do you guys think? Should our diva be peeling now or diving? What do you guys think? I don't know. This is tough, isn't it, chat? It's tough. My initial response is I think that considering the fact that the D.Va and Moira are directly on top of your Sojourn who's ulting, I would like Matrix on the Sojourn more probably more than anything else. But I can also see a pretty decent argument for going on the Hanzo because he's also a very big threat to your Sojourn. I think the peeling here makes more sense, but if somebody in chat says I would prefer to dive the Hanzo, that's not necessarily a bad decision. So let's see. Ooh, easy. L look at this, look at this. This is 10 times better than anything that we've seen from your Sigma. sucks but that but that this in the last 60 seconds i honestly don't have a lot of feedback i think the peeling was relatively good um i thought the diving was good really nice um not perfect uh there's some micro things but for a diamond diva holy mackerel and now <sighs> you're killing me
I'm not even saying Zarya is a bad swap here. Like it's a, like this is a short range maps or uh, point. So it actually makes kind of sense. But this is what I'm talking about. You've played one, two, three, four, five, six tanks, seven, including the Winston swap in one map. You're killing me. You're killing me. So my priority for you in terms of feedback um well tell you tell you what let, let's let's just watch a little bit of zarya here let's just watch a little bit of zarya we got one team fight of zarya let's see let's see if we can make it count so here's the thing you can use a bubble early if you're aware that you are okay with giving up space Okay, so if you look at this bubble now, is a team fight about to happen? The answer is yes. Okay, so then you're going to be down resource when the team fight happens. So you need to be willing to give up space or ha understand that you're not going to have the full amount of cooldowns. This was the actual neutral. So yes, you get 40, but now the fight has started and you only have one bubble. I'm not saying this is bad. You just need to understand the pros and cons. Case in point. And again, chat, again, I understand. I understand why. It's a respawn, you, you gotta touch. But it just, of course, it had to be this map where you needed to touch, and so we, we did it again. It's, a, it's like that goofy meme, I'm gonna do it again. You know, he's gonna swap. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Ask, answer this question. What are you doing? 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 Yeah. All right. We have a problem. So I, I would say that the, the number one problem, the solution for you, and maybe you were aware of this and you, you're working at it. Okay. But I am telling you flat out. You, you 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 cannot play the game like this. You you just can't. Not if you okay. You can, but you play for fun. If you're looking to improve, you, this this has to this has to be fixed. Um, I want if you want to continue to experiment, you're experimenting. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is so important. You are experimenting on finding what tanks you like playing, not what tanks feel good in Overwatch 2. Because I promise you, with you doing what you're doing right now, nothing outside of maybe D.Va, because you apparently know how to play D.Va better than you do any other tank, is gonna feel good. Your Sigma look awkward and clunky. Your Ball looks awkward and clunky. Your Zarya looked awkward and clunky. And I promise you, let's actually look at your Arisa. Let's look at your Arisa. Well, actually, I'm not gonna even coach your Arisa. Let's just, let's just look at it a little bit, okay? Let's just look at let's look at how your Arisa looks. Awkward and clunky. You need to figure out what your hero pool is going to be. And we need to sort that out. We need to sort that out. And I'm not necessarily saying the mistakes that you're making. Oh, I see my more effort. I don't care. You just don't, you just don't, it, it just shows me clearly that you don't have enough hours in this hero. So you need to figure out what your hero pool is going to be and what heroes that you enjoy the most. We talked about two to three, maybe four tops. That has to happen at some point. That has to happen at some point. I don't care if it's Winston, Diva, Roadhog, Sigma. You know, I don't care if it's main tanks and off tanks. Like, we're getting to a point in Overwatch 2 where having a flexible hero pool is helpful, right? You don't have to be Zarya Sigma Diva only, only off tanks. You know, you can mix it up. But you have to you have to get more reps in the heroes that you're playing. And then for your Sigma specifically, 
It's going to be about you doing a better job controlling sightlines and using your resources, balancing your resources a lot better. Um, for your other heroes, I, we didn't see enough of your Zarya. We talked a little bit about that one bubble tip I had for you. Uh, your Diva, from what we saw, looked good. We gave you some advice on it, but honestly, it seemed like you did it pretty well. Um, Orisa, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if you're going to be playing Orisa. I mean, it's just a mess. This is a hard VOD to review. Um, do you have any questions, Claus? Very, very unorthodox review, but this is what this is what you need to hear. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Narrow that hero pool down a lot. That I would say at least 30, 40, even 50% of your issues on like Sigma, for example, will improve dramatically if you just put a little bit of time into it. I felt a little bit like I was coaching somebody who just doesn't have enough hours on a hero. And it's, it's why I don't coach brand new players because so many of those issues just kind of sort themselves out. It's hard to it's hard to like explain some of the you just need you just need to play more. You just need to play more. Okay. If you have any questions, uh Claus, I'll send you a poach coach actually I'll send you the post coaching checklist right now before we go to bed. Um, um I would give this a look over as quickly as you can, tomorrow or whenever. And then if you have any questions at all, please direct message me. I will be available. You don't need to wait for Ask Spyler or wait for stream. You could just DM me. My VOD reviews cost money, yes. This is sadly, for my parents, how I make a living. Living. <laughs> Next VOD review. Where is the replay cut? Fatax, are you here? Fatax, Fatax, Fat Axe. Ready for battle. Ready for battle. Possibly. Well, that's a shame. Oh, answer, a answer your question. I, I will, I will, I will. I, I can't right now though. We gotta, we gotta. Could I do the Legion first, if you don't mind? Of course. If it's, if it's not wiped, of course. We might only have time for one. Wait, it already exists in my list. Where? <laughs> Am I blind, chat? I might be blind. This is Midtown. Oh, you sent me a third code! No. There it is. That's okay. I think I think we're okay. Now arriving at Ready battle. Hey, Cronus, hybrid, Yazin. Alright, <clears throat> A10. Ready. Is this just Anna? Is this Anna? Is this Anna? 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 Anna. Okay. Yeah. We'll skip the Moira because, <laughs> well, you know. Um, but we'll look at the auto. Let me update the command vod. Yeah, this is this is actually as in. Okay, let's do this. So, we reviewed Ana recently. Ready. And the idea with support in Overwatch 2, which I talked literally about in Alpha, talked about in Beta, and now is finally coming around because, you know, some of the bigger name content creators brought it up, and so now people are parroting them, is supports are supports. They're not heal bots. Now, you have to be way more proactive, way more dynamic with your playstyle. You have to pay attention to the battlefield. You have to pay attention to your threats. 
I look at the enemy team right now, and I would love for you to play aggressively, but it's you're gonna need to know the status of Winston, Genji, Tracer, and to a lesser extent, Lucio at all times. So your priority here is obviously trying to survive and trying to get value, but your priority might also just be how much value are you getting out of your nade? How much value are you getting out of your sleep dart? How much value are you getting out of your shots? Even if that means they're being used defensively. So let's, um, it's gonna be a lot of, but well, here's the thing though. Here's, here's what's changed. What does a lack of diva matrix mean for Ana? What does the lack of defense matrix for a team red mean versus team blue chat? She has to peel herself. So how do you peel yourself? How do you peel yourself? Well, free nades, yeah, on both sides, but how do you peel yourself? That's the question, isn't it? Play near health packs. Run away, nade, sleep enemies, shoot flankers before they dive. Yeah, exactly. So by giving candy with emotes, sure. If our Ana sits here and doesn't move, change position, or dynamically approach the battlefield, she will eventually die. So, but if our Ana starts here and then moves to here and then moves to here and then doubles back and then is constantly adjusting her position and making it difficult to track, then she may or may not survive. The other thing to keep in mind, as I watch your echo fall to her death, is that having DCs on your team is really, really annoying. That sucks. I mean, you just chunked both cooldowns, so GG's. There's nothing to read there. Is this guy trolling? Like, what's going on? He's just throwing the- he's throwing. Nicely. You don't need to nade that. You have a- you have a Farah. Move, 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 move. Take space, take sight lines. Let's go. No sitting still. No sitting still. Move. Windows closed. Survive, survive, survive. There's bubble. Move, 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 move. Walk up. Nade, sleep, dart, shoot, shoot, shoot. Move, stop sitting and spawn. Stop. Run, 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 run. Ah! See, here's the thing. This is what happens when you don't move. When you don't, and I don't necessarily mean move up to bridge and nade the floor. I'm saying just get to here, throw a nade, throw a couple of shots, rotate to here. Okay, now I'm going to come across here. Like you here, you've missed your opportunity to get something done. So what happens? What happens? Good, good sleep. And then nothing, right? Nothing. Where should you go after the Winston sleep? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Somebody in chat, tell me. You went to sleep? Where'd you go? Towards the team. Yes. Or if your team can't help you, run away. Run away. Need the floor. Shoot the... It's a 1v1 versus a tracer. You could have drawn this out way longer than you did. You got the health pack at essentially full HP, so that was a waste. Not good. To your team is generally the better play, though. To your team. And it's just a disaster. You've missed your window to go aggressive, and then you failed on the defensive. You've done nothing worth mentioning. Fire 
You don't want to be here. Move, 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 move. You need to get to cover. Cover, 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 cover. You move, and you don't chunk your sleep dart like like, like a complete moron. Aww. Okay. You are going in aggressively. Your tank is taking attention. You have seen monkey bubble. Monkey bubble. This means you need to move. Move. Go. Yes, keep going. Go to cover. Don't stay in here. Or run all the way back to your mega health pack. So that then you have at least better cover. This is this is stupid. So 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 I hope you're at least getting the, the some of the some of the the, the the nuances that I'm trying to explain here, okay? So what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna ask a question and you're gonna give me the answer to make sure that you understand. Well, why is there a German discussion happening in my Twitch chat? Y'all are wild, man. Where should where should you go? Oh, never mind. The fight's won. Well, that's boring. What should you be doing right now? What should you be doing? I know you're not quite sure because you haven't been doing it for the last five minutes. So think about it and then come up with an answer. Where? Why? Why else? Why now? Why now? Why don't you just go to the dojo every time? Why is nobody contesting you? Okay. We're learning. Where do you go? I don't want to be in the same Discord call with this moron. I don't want to hear his voice! Or her voice, or whatever. Back to the bridge? Why? Oh, uh, th thank you, <laughs> Landon, for the sub. I appreciate it. Why back to the bridge? What has happened that made you think going back to the bridge? Why are you too deep? Don't, don't, don't automatically just say things. Think, think, think. Look at the battlefield, look at the kill feed, look at the situation, and think. Tell me what you can do. What else do you see? They're down to and, 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 and what? What did you just 
tell me the previous fight. To get to cover? Okay, yes. That's the problem number one. You need cover. But why were you allowed to rotate from here to here? Why? Remember what you said? Do you remember what you said? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me read you. They are either, because no one is contesting me, they are either dead or fighting someone else. Dear Fatax, what is happening right now? We are cleaning up. You have two options here. You walk into the monkey bubble and sleep dart his poor sag booty, or you walk back to the dojo and you attack the tracer. The tracer, where you know where she's at, and you have both cooldowns, go get her, sick him, and heal your team. Or walk into the monkey and sick him. Don't stand here. Move. Ah! 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 Non-factor! Liability! Waste of space! Waste of oxygen! Waste of time! Nothing! You would get better of value of a bronze Moira one trick than you have this entire fight. This entire map! You slept hybrid twice. Congrats. Get her! Shoot her! Kill her! Get her! Yes! Now move! You don't have your nade! Move! 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 You don't have your nade! Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go? Okay, you, you naded a tracer. That 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 that's generally not good. Okay, not 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 generally good. Okay, so 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 so. Where do you go? Dojo. Why do you go dojo? Why 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 do you go dojo? It's super safe right now. Why else do you go dojo? Okay, what did you just use? You could see Tracer coming and you just used Nade. So right now you're thinking, I don't really want to 1v1 this Tracer right now. I need to move away. So I'm gonna move away to a different position where I can still see my team and still get a sight line. Okay? Nade and you need cover. Right, right, right. I don't like this. I don't like, now you've rolled the dice. Do I hit the sleep dart? Oh, I didn't hit the sleep dart? Well, guess what? Look at where I'm at. In no man's land. No way. No way. Move, you don't have nade. The tracer's on you. You, you walk away. Rotate to another position. Better sight line. She's on you again. You grab the health back. You rotate again. And then by then, maybe you have your nade. And then if you're doing your job elsewhere, and maybe that tracer's used to recall, then you go kill her. In and out, and in and out, and in and out. Do you see how I'm simultaneously telling you to play more aggressive? And then you need to be disengaging? Do you see this? Do you see this? That's Overwatch 2. I'm not saying you need to always play aggressively to get kills. That's called dynamics, chat. This is dynamics. Ah! That's dynamics. Up and down and up and down. Okay, that's dynamics. Up and down. Okay? Dynamics is not. That is not dynamics. That is one dimensional. That is not dynamics either. That is also one dimensional, but of a different type. You need to read the situation and do both. You push and you pull. You rotate left and right to create more offensive opportunities, but also to make it easier for you to survive. 
you were static. Now, in Overwatch 1, that was bad, but it was doable because all you really needed to do was support your team and, and, and survive, and you were okay sometimes. I wasn't always good, but now this one fewer playmaker, so if you're a deadweight lead sock, you know, like, like nobody, then it's a lot harder to keep you alive, and standing still doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't help you to survive more. And I don't, listen, chat, if you're playing against a Sombra Tracer Winston, you are not looking for nades in the back line. You are not looking to play aggressively, but you're still moving because you're making it harder for them to scout you, harder for them to lock you down, and making it harder for them to actually kill you. Dynamic has nuance aggressively or defensively. Okay? Okay? Look, look at their comp. I'm not saying go look for nades in their back line, but move. Okay, they've got you. They've got you. They know where you are. All right. If you stand here and heal bot, I promise you, you will die. This monkey will jump you. The tracer will pincer. The Lucio. Look at, look at Cronus. Look at this guy. Idiot. 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 He, you're dead. You're dead. A chat. He's dead. He's dead. He stood still too long. He's dead. I told you. I told you. I I told you. I told you. And the thing is, is I'm not even big brain coach with the replay code. I have all the information. You see Winston, you hear Tracer on your right. What do you think they're doing? You gotta move. 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 Bait the jump in. They're like, where the where the heck is she? They missed the jump. They've wasted that entire time on the flank. Meanwhile, Yazin is murdering. And there you go. Too long. Too slow. Yeah, these are pro players. The Cronus Hybrid is X Overwatch League. Cronus is one of the best main supports um, in in um, in contenders. Uh, a lot of these might be smart, or like just all accounts. I don't know all of them. Yazin is one of the best faros in the world. A I mean, everyone knows a ten. <laughs> and now we go Moira because that that was definitely the problem. Moira will definitely fix the problems here. I just, just shame on you, man. Just ridiculous. It's just absolutely okay. We're back in Ana. Thank goodness. Time again to try Wait, you swap when you have coal? I mean, I get that they have like a massive ult bank. Maybe that's it. Maybe you're just saying I gotta sleep nanoblade, I guess. I don't know. It has to be it. Oh man. I just don't know. Like, I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> Let's look at your play. You look at your play here. Do they know where you are right now? do now you've used both cooldowns and you've whiffed both and then now you've given yourself away and not only that but you have the audacity to hard scope look at this please please uh, 
question for you, Fatex. Were you nervous this game? Or at all? Maybe, maybe I'm totally reading this wrong. I could be reading this wrong. You could be honest with me. You could say no. I won't get my feelings hurt. Okay. Because I look at things like this. I, I don't know what this is. I, I don't know what this is, to be honest with you. There's some of these cooldowns that just legitimately look like you panicked and you just kind of yeeted them. And then you hard scope here. But again, do you know where that tracer is? Do you know where that Genji is? I don't think you do. Like, you die to air. Somehow we're up three, they've wasted Nanoblade, and somehow you die to a monkey just walking on top of you and tickling you. you your, your positioning here is horrific. Horrific positioning. So... I don't want to sit here and roast your positioning, though. I think the dynamics are probably the most important thing. But should you have gone to point? Okay, well, that's a great question. You don't hit the sleep dart. Where do you play? Where do you go? You tell me. I think you were fine to stay where you were. This this one time, they don't know where you are. You still have pretty decent sight lines. You've got a hacked mega. I think you're okay to actually stay now. I've actually, I think you can actually stay here now. But my question is... Is this the play? <laughs> is this the play? I mean, clearly not, right? Right? You should have just stayed on the corner. You should have stayed in the corner. This We saw this on the first point as well. Your corner, your cover usage is really quite atrocious. Your dynamics aren't good, but your cover usage is also not very good. Now, think about this, chap. Ana's pretty hard to reach here, right? So there are going to be some times in your games where the positions that you hold are so strong that you don't need to dynamically move that much, okay? This position is really quite strong. If you get the space for this, this is really hard for the enemy team, right? So does he need to move here? I don't know. I don't know. That's a good question, ducking cold. <laughs> it's a good question. Maybe you could stay here until the fight rotates to point and then adjust your positioning from there. Let's just play it out and see what happens. Your 1v1s versus Tracer are really not quite good, are not good at all. So you drop. Miss the sleep. You hit a shot. Now, is that the end of the world here? Here's a, here's a question, chat. Here's a question, chat. Who has the advantage in this duel right now? Hi, Kitty. Anna. Hmm. So how does Fatax survive this? 
I mean, of course he has recall. Let me give you a little hint. This is how you win, right here. By not throwing your nade into the abyss, yes. But also, why are you 1v1ing a tracer in the open? If you had used cover here and played this corner here, you would have at the very least survived infinitely longer. Look at your mercy. She wants to help, but you're dead. Do you see that? She actually connects the beam to you as you die. Really poor cover usage and really poor cooldown usage into the tracer. The sleep dart was missed, that's unfortunate. Not not a worry. But the nade usage? Come on. Come on. You gotta be better than that. I mean, even things like the support passive affecting when she recalls, right? When she recalls, and if you're using good cover, oftentimes you'll get 15, 20%, or 15, 20, 25 HPS, or 25 healing from the support passive before she damages you again. Um, so it's really hard for her to win that. You've been very, very, very heavy, to be frank with you. I mean, your mechanics aren't even bad here. You're, you're, you're giving hybrid the fits, even though you're missing a lot of these uh, these nades, right? Why do you not have sleep dart? Ah, man, like. Like you walked in at literally like you you were a 50 HP because you were walking in a straight line and you still made it hard for him. Look at that. He had to recall and he's 50 HP. I mean, it's an overtime thing, so I don't want to like overthink it too much, but there a lot of these deaths are coming from your inability to use your cooldowns correctly, defensively, your inability to use cover, and your inability to move dynamically. You've missed Nay, that's it. Like, that's really, truly it. When you chunk Nade like that, and you get zero pressure out of it, it's over. It's over. Now, you could make the argument they're playing dive comp. It's better to use nade defensively. I mean, I don't know. Like, if you hit the nade, you hit the nade. But you chunk the nade, it's over. They use that as a cue. It's over. It's over. Ooh, that was close. Um, not necessarily. It's second cold. If you, if you get a chance to like get the nade regardless, then it can kind of set tempo on them early. Like if, for example, if we'd hit the nade here, it would have naded the Winston and the Genji, which would have meant the Genji probably would have had to back off a little bit or deflect off of the Ryan swings, and the Winston would have had to bubble early, rather, sooner than he probably would have liked to. Um, which means that kind of throws their whole tempo for a loop. If you hit it, you hit it. After bubble is a good time to do it, but if you can get it before bubble to put them on the back foot, it's not a bad use of it, but you have to hit it. It's just so lazy. It's just so, so lazy. You cannot do things like that. Here comes the sco hard scope on a wonder again. Why are you scoping here? Walk, like, like walk, 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 walk. Go forward, catch the staggers. Holy mackerel, dude. Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel, dude. 15 second cooldown. All right, dynamic movement, right? 
Rotate back into her. Rotate back into her. She's just used pulse recall. You have nade again, and you're close to sleep dart. Do not stay here. Rotate up through here. You can look for an aggressive nade or start shooting aggressively and have your nade as a defensive cooldown. Please do not stand here. Please do not stand here. Please do not stand here. Do you see what I'm talking about? Do you see what I'm talking about? You give away your position, you use a cooldown, you don't hit it, you put zero pressure with it. I understand the monkey's critical, but still, you stay in one spot, and then instead of that moving into the tracer with better cover usage, and then the Winston misses his jump entirely, you stand here and get pincered. Once again, dynamic movement. It's rough. It's rough. And I un let me let me be very clear. What I'm explaining to you is an art. It is not something that I can just simply point and break it down in a diagram in two minutes and you're gonna explain it. It's an art. It's something that I'm not even particularly good at. But it's something that you have to be thinking about and experimenting with and learning the flow of it better. The more you practice it, you'll start to feel more of what I'm talking about. But you but you have to actually be trying to practice it. Okay, now this position is pretty strong, but even here, I don't think you can permanently stand. Like right now, you throw that nade aggressively, I would even duck and hide and then go over here. Because guess what? There's the blade, there's the beat, they know where you are, goodbye, you're dead. Think about it this way. You know they've got blade, you know they've got beat. Throw an aggressive nade and then dip. Make them guess. You walk it, okay, you you dip. And and what happens? What are they blading? You hot what are they blading? One more fight. Ah, oh, gosh, that's painful. Good use of cover, bad use of sleep. That was a little bit better, but still position could have been better there. Please stop doing that, I, I beg of you. The problem is not the aggressive use of sleep, the problem is that you're just throwing it. You're not even necessarily trying to use, you're just RNG d dice rolling it. It really does look like you're not there. You've been honestly deadlifted this map. Okay, so so dynamic movement, cover usage, and just yeeting your cooldowns out. Those are the priorities for you. Now, what I'm going to do would be walking outside the top left mega be better than walking main. Um, in some circumstances, yes. In some circumstances, yes. Now, you're a better player than I am by a lot, right? I, I'm... I'm probably guessing where I'm at right now. If I were to actually play any serious amount of support, I'm probably like Diamond 1. Maybe. Maybe Masters 5 in support. And 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 this is after I shake the rust off. But you have a big glaring hole in your gameplay, whereas you're significantly better in mechanics than I am, right? There's a huge there's a huge gap in your understanding of the dynamic movement and what you're doing with your cooldowns and you understanding the flow of battle. So I'm not doing this necessarily for your benefit because you should know these things and I think you understand these things, but I want chat to, to, fully, to make sure that they understand. Do you have any questions? Fatax. Before I demonstrate to everybody else in chat what I mean. I hope we play off of some sort of dive comp or something. And I know, am I butchering your name? Fate axes sound cooler than fat axe. <laughs> Unclear to me where my place in the map is. Okay, that that's where that's where you honestly have to th start thinking like a plat or a gold again that's new to the game and learning corner cover. You have to start experimenting and stress testing and trying all the different things instead. It's FedEx. Huh. Um so you need to kind of like relearn the game a little bit in terms of how you're, where and how you can move. 
Do you notice during the review several times I literally just paused and I asked where could you go, where would you go, and why? That's something that you need to be doing on your own time with your own self-review. I, I, I completely beefed. I didn't even look at your coaching form. Um, I'll try and do that as soon as this game is done. Um, but you do that like anything else. Okay, we're playing with Doomfist. I'm going to be going off of Doomfist timing aggressively, potentially depending on the enemy composition. I'm going to assume they have Sombra unless proven otherwise. Torbjorn looks like. Zen. Reaper. He's in. Three, two. Missed a nade. I'm out because I don't have nade. Grab health back. Walk forward. I thought he was going to drop deflect. Ooh, dear. Cover. Always cover. I don't want to nade that because I'm going to peek around this in just a second. I need to turn the game audio just a little bit. I really don't want to peek that yet because I've got spam. There's the Doomfist. He's distracting. I can land a nade. Didn't get it. I have sleeping nade soon. I don't want to fish for cooldowns now because we're going to have an opportunity to use it aggressively soon because my Doomfist is here. And cooldowns. Okay, there's there's the kill. Where's I'm going to take an aggressive position. There's nothing in the enemy team outside of the... Oh, dear. There's nothing outside of the enemy Genji that I really have to worry about. Oh dear. Mechanics. I went off my Doomfist timing. Nobody's looking at me. I went to an aggressive position, but nobody could punish me because my Doomfist was in. Even just my Doomfist eing is space. Nobody's pushing card. I got to push card, sadly. All right, we're going to back off in a second anyway because the respawns are in and we're down to... They're on Reinhardt, so I cannot sit behind my Doomfist because I will never land a cooldown versus a Reinhardt shield. So I actually have to play way more aggressively. They're going to have Nano Blades soon. I might just try and hide. That was a greedy sleep, but I felt like I would have time to build it back up again. They're going to be looking for Nano Blades soon. I don't know if I can stop their Nano Blade, though, because they're going to look for my Cassie, so maybe I should look for something aggressive instead. Oh no, I messed up. Oh no, my cat is stepping on my thing. I'm gonna bleed myself to death. Ah! My. Oh my gosh, chat. My cat stepped on my enter thing and my Cassie dies as a result. <laughs> this guy's mad at me. I think it's winnable because I think we're back. Oh my gosh. Big nade, but I don't Oh no, he blocked it. Ah, crud. We actually just lost because of my st my cat. I don't want that Genji to know where I am. John Krentz above me. I don't really want to clear him off. I don't know what I was aiming for with that nade. That was bad. Dude, that sucks. I shouldn't have gotten shattered. I need to get the high ground if I can. I think I can get the high ground. Oh! Crud. Okay. 
that. Oh, and I. Oh, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I don't have sleep. Dead, stupid fat butt. gonna drop shield there. Huh. Wait, he lived? He lived. Wait, what did he just go through me? Oh, that was a bad nade. That was lazy. I I'm getting juked, chat! I'm getting juked. Oh, I can't. Can't aim. Holy cow. Oh, chat. These mechanics have not been good the last few seconds. my first death though clearly I'm, I'm carrying if I only die once I don't do anything the rest of the game but that's good enough right all right I don't even know what to nano I guess my doom fist but okay, I would like to nano my Cassie but they're just gonna hold Rhine shield there's no angle for him to take Really stressful. I feel like I should have died there. Turn that shield. Turn that shield. Got him. I'm Yoko, thank you for the raid. I'm sweating. No! I missed that sleep by a micromillimeter. Hope you had a nice stream. Hang on. Ah! No, I can't hit a shot. Nate, for surely he drops. I think a Cassidy should be Shafe. Aw, oh, come on, y'all. Ah, I was like, I don't want to heal my Cassidy because that's going to give away my position because he could two tap it, surely, right? Thank you for the raid, Meta. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You'll have to try harder than that. I'm going in. 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 I know what he's gonna do. Oh, I thought he was gonna flank. What? <sighs> nice Genji kill, thank you. Alright. 
Will I be able to touch? Will I be able to get my nano off? I don't know. Run! Okay, hopefully you guys saw at least a little bit of some of the concepts I was talking about. Um, for those of you that are not Fatax, um, yeah, that was unfortunate. Crud, man. Was doing so- 50% sleep out actually, that's not bad. And we lost this fight. <laughs> He's off the map. <laughs> we lost this fight, chat! We lost this fight! Any tips for Tracer 2? I'm Masters 2 at the moment. Um, hmm. I think for Tracers, you're gonna have to spend more time uh, dueling DPS. I don't know. Dueling DPS and you're gonna be putting pressure on tanks and it, because of the, your, your DPS drop off. So you're playing more for like the flanker style. But outside of that, I have to look at a bot. Why didn't I play flex support for London though? Hey, I'm not a bad flex support. I used to be GM back in the day. Back in the day. Um, okay. Um, 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 chat. Is Cager around? Let's ask if Cager's around. Where is Cager? I very much wish to speak with him. He's not online. Chat, we're going to do a hammer time of Cager when he's not even here. So chat, I camera time, if you guys haven't seen it, people will submit educational Disclaimer. content and I will tell you whether it's garbage or not. Um, what we've done recently is we've been a little bit nicer with it because I've realized I don't want to be flaming people's content if they didn't specifically ask for the criticism. So what we've actually learned is we've learned that um, Cager is a little bit masochistic because he's always submitting his content for being reviewed. So we're going to roast Cager and we're going to tell you where it's going on. Um, He's not even here. He's going to be so, so, so very, very mad. Um, maybe we'll play a little bit more Overwatch in a second, but I, I want to do the hammer time thing first. Okay. Um, okay. The ultimate Kiriko guide is the title. Let's change. Uh, why is my face down here? Uh, I don't even know if that's in line. I don't care. Let's just start. This is by far the most advanced Kiriko guide on YouTube. Whilst others have made basic Kiriko guides, or have claimed they're Kiriko- <laughs> Okay! Alright, alright, alright. Listen, this guy just threw down the gauntlet the first thing he says. Yeah, yeah cheers, Fatex. Um, if you have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to ask me. This guy, this guy. Guides to be in depth. If you watch the entire video, especially the playstyle section, you will see that this video trumps them all. Out of the 34 uh, heroes I've made guides on, Kiriko has been by far the most difficult hero to theorize and script the guide on, and I hope the last section will show that to you as well. Anyways, let's get on with it. Kiriko's primary fire, her Healy Papers, make Kiriko fire some healing talisman that seek targeted allies, dealing 13 healing per talisman with a maximum 35 meter lock-on range. Right, the so yellow good. talisman show that your healing has been locked on, whereas the blue talisman do not. However, the blue talisman can still heal. Contrary to some other guides, Kiriko can dish out a significant amount of healing, dealing 79 healing per second, although the projectile speed can reduce this, which leads me onto my first piece of advice, which is to maintain short to medium sightlines. This means that your healing of Fuda will get to your ally faster due to a reduced time to so travel. That, that's good heal per second, but the reason why people are not as much of a fan of her healing is because it's it's dip, it's like there's an opportunity. Like think about like with Ana, right? You can heal bot easier with Ana simply because you have the nade that allows you to heal bot better and you have the more consistent range with your heal that allows you to do different things. Same thing with the Moira. Moira is also is AoE as well. So it's not so much that you can't heal bot with Kiriko, but why would you heal bot with Kiriko? Am and I hydrating? My bad. the chance that your healing of Fuda will miss and get blocked by your ally simply turning around a corner. Also, try and focus on single target healing rather than spreading your healing across multiple teammates. The reason for this is because you could be missing your healing of Fuda when trying to flick your healing between teammates and for you to stop healing and to heal someone else just takes too long. A key thing to mention before moving on is to ensure that you interweave your kunai and your talisman like Baptiste's gun. So you might fire a full set of talisman, shoot your kunai once or twice, then continue the cycle. Okay. Note that you can also animation cancel your melee with your kunai Spe but the point is made on the heal botting like that that is definitely correct like the heal it, it is he probably heal botting is probably better with with, uh, with with kiriko than i gave it credit for compared to other supports it still doesn't make a good in overwatch 2 but that is true speaking of which kiriko's secondary fire azami's kunai 
makes Kiriko throw kunai, dealing 40 damage to the body and 120 to the head. They travel at 70 meters per second with a fire rate of 1 kunai for almost every half second. For reference, Zen's orbs travel at 90 meters per second and by just doing some math, Kiriko's DPS from just body shots alone is 72.7. In comparison, Senyata's DPS is 120 from just body shots, no discord. Likewise to your healing of Fuda, maintain short to medium sightlines. Your kunai have a relatively slow projectile speed, hence landing them from afar is going to be more inconsistent than landing them up close. Another piece of advice is to try and find narrow, tight angles to where you can spam your kunai aiming at head level in order to maximize your chances of landing headshots, and who knows, you might even get a pick. The best- Um, I, I agree with that, but I have to say like, the supports in Overwatch in general don't have a lot of range, so I think like she can she can still operate at longer ranges is what I would say. Because um, if you compare her to like supports like Bat, Moira, Mercy, Lucio, Brig, um, then there's more flexibility with longer range. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the best, but I don't think that you can only do short mid range. I don't think that's what he's saying. But just advice for Kunai is target priority. The two general rules for target priority are to shoot what's easy and or what's dangerous. You don't want to be shooting 40 mm -hmm. damage kunais into shields, but instead, you want to be landing 120 kunais on squishies and tanks. I'll mention this example later, but say you're on King's Sword third point attack, instead of stacking main shooting shield, you could use either of the high grounds using any of your mobility to at least shoot behind the enemy Reinhardt, or preferably, shooting any unaware squishies. Just imagine two tapping an unaware sniper, like a Widowmaker or an Ana, who are easy targets, or a soldier sure. walking in a straight line, fishing for a railgun one shot, both an easy and dangerous target. Kiriko's first ability, Moira Fade but better, makes Kiriko teleport directly to an ally, even through walls, with a max range of 35 meters alongside a cooldown of 7 seconds. Note that Swift Step has a brief cast time that can be interrupted and can cleanse most negative effects. Also note that, thanks to Q, you can use the stock sensitivity of your Swift Step to help guide your healing of Fuda. This indicator reference tip only works on the default Swift Step sensitivity of 50. If you put it any higher, let's say 100 for example, it will not be an accurate representation of whether the O okay. will seek or not. You can increase the sensitivity of your Swift Step to be able to flick to an ally to escape easier, but this will come at the cost of your Fuda accuracy. There are two main uses to Swift Step, aggressive and defensive. Let's go through defensive first. What seems to be a unanimous stance amongst most coaches and guides out there is to initially take an aggressive position or angle as Kiriko, then use your teleport defensively to escape danger. As Iostock described it, an oh shit button. His follow describing an example of ML7 who could have done this on Kiriko. Like look at the Farah, look at the Zarya, and look at the Genji. They're all looking at him right now. Imagine all of this resource being devoted into a Kiriko who then just TPs out and then you got your team walks forward and you just press shift a seven second cool hey chat you're famous do, 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 you see, do you see this do you see this chat do you see this this is what i was talking about okay he kind of trolls the lobby with how he does it and he also doesn't have his e so i'm like not a huge fan but do you see how like theoretically here he could shoot 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 bait attention then tp out and like bait a lot of attention his, his execution and timing there i think was a goof up but like there's theory in there as io stocks brings up in his guide unlike more fade you have to do a 180 degree turn to teleport to a teammate on Kiriko. So getting comfortable and ready to do your flicks to quickly escape danger will be vital for staying alive. You can also utilize the invulnerability frames of your swift step to avoid things like Sombra's EMP. For example, on Route 66, say a Sombra tries to EMP you and your Zen. If you anticipate the EMP, you could swift step to your Zen, avoiding the EMP entirely, and then use your protection Suzu on your Zen to save his life afterward. In the year of our Lord, 2022, Cager OW, Zoomer, Tide Pod eating, TikTok addicted, uh, nutcase, man child, is using stat freaking banana overheads to demonstrate how to dodge EMP with Kiriko instead of uploading a custom game and demonstrating it for real. This guy's out of here using the abacus instead of the calculator at 18 years old or 17 or whatever. Are you kidding me? You're going to draw it on stat banana with, oh, just show us how it happens. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. He's 10 years younger than I am, over a decade, and he's still using Step Banana. No!
upwards. However, I want to take this idea a step further, leading me onto aggressive swift steps. While some guys out there have advised against using swift step aggressively, there needs to be more nuance and development of this idea. True! Course, teleporting to- It's almost as if when you have a 13 minute guide, you have more space for nuance! Your Genji, whilst he's deep in the enemy backline, or teleporting straight to your tank whilst they're on critical HP is not a good idea. However, teleporting to a healthy DPS who's taking an aggressive position in order to dish out damage yourself or to help support your DPS seems more appropriate. Referring back to the King's Zord third point attack example, this would be teleporting to a Sombra or Genji playing on high grounds. The last use of teleport I'll go through is- Okay, so he says this, but there has to be- he, he really, really needs to give more disclaimer about that because the aggressive teleport can work as long as you're teleporting to a location that allows you to stabilize for the next four or five seconds so then you can TP out. The problem with this Genji example is the only reason that this works is because there's not a Genji on the enemy team. If there was a Genji or a Winston or a, a, a Hanzo or, a, or, or uh, I don't know, anything with vertical mobility, Doomfist, whatever, um, then this becomes a lot more risky because they can then use your mobility on top of you and dive you and you no longer have your mobility to escape. So I agree with him and this example, teeping aggressively makes a lot of sense. There's nothing to punish you. But if there is something to punish you, if you need time to be able to stabilize so that you have the capability to TP out again, and that is not something that he brings up. This would be purposes. So for example, on Li Jung Tower Night Market, you could wall climb on the high ground, discount where the enemy team is coming from, and then teleport straight out to your team. Kiriko's second ability, the R6 impact grenade, makes Kiriko throw a Suzu that deals 50 healing, makes allies invulnerable for 1 second, as well as cleansing the majority of negative effects in the game, like Biotic Nade, Hack, etc. It is also on a 14 second cooldown. There are two main uses of Kiriko's protection Suzu, to use it selfishly or to use it selflessly. Since using it more selfishly is more simple to explain, let's start off with that. Selfish Suzus are most commonly used when you yourself Selfish are in Suzus. danger, likely from taking an aggressive position. For example, if you and Genji are dueling another Genji, and you happen to be low HP, you might want to Suzu yourself to prevent death. You could all- Suzu- Dude, this guy is still on stat banana! This guy is still using stat banana! I found another visual example! Please, please, listen, listen, listen. Genji are dueling another Genji, and you happen to be low HP, you might want to Suzu yourself to prevent death. You could also teeth- Dude, just look at this guy. This guy is using the asterisk. Ooh, ooh. Asterisk implies action, ladies and gentlemen. I'm using Suzu woo woo. Dude, just show us, show it to us. Surely you have one friend, maybe two. Please, please. Take some of your, 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 your thousands and tens and millions of dollars of your YouTube bag and pay somebody off the street to log into the free to play Overwatch, get into a custom game and do it with you. I don't, this is so much worse visually to like draw it out here and stat, but man, I can't be out there, but I you could be this. losing. Just, just, just get anybody. In that angle and leaving your Genji out in the dry. The selfless Suzus are a bit more complicated. As a general rule of thumb, look for teammates who are aggressive and are likely to be pressured and get ready to Suzu them if need be. Refer back to the Sombra Zen example I gave in the last section. More simple example Please don't do it could again. be using your Suzu on a Reinhardt who just got anteed whilst you're busy on an angle I did it again. More bananas. shooting at the enemy team, or it could be using your Suzu on a friendly no! chaser, taking a duel, and she got hacked by the enemy Sombra, in which case you can just teleport over to her, Suzu your tracer, and fend off the enemy Sombra. This refers back to my stance on aggressive teleports, where in this example- How is this guy the most zoomer of zoomers, but he's using the most dry, crusty, fetid example ever? You're aggressively teleporting over to your tracer, but it's unlikely that you or her are in any great danger. Kiriko is therefore almost akin to- See, I, I, my guide, even though it's not the ultimate Kiriko guide, I actually had gameplay examples of not only me doing it in a king's row with my brother, but I actually, I actually found gameplay examples of me demonstrating what I was trying to talk about and throwing on here. This guy's out here writing his script and throwing random gameplay that's completely irrelevant in the background. Shame on you, Cager. Shame on you support Tracer, in that she can instantaneously relieve pressure anywhere on the map using a teleport and protection Suzu to immediately swing a duel in favour of her team. SHOW ME! Some... SHOW IT TO ME! I WANT TO SEE! Please no other support in the game who has the flexibility to do this, which is why, unlike some other guides have stated, you can play Kiriko in split compositions, but I'll get onto that in the last section of the guides. Kiriko's ultimate, Mini Hanamura, 
makes Kiriko summon a Fox Spirit that rushes forward, accelerating move speed by 50%, rate of fire by 50%, reload time by 50%, cooldown reduction by 60%, all lasting 10.5 seconds, with a 20 by what percent? time for 50%, cooldown reduction by 60%. 60%? You mean 300%? All lasting an increase of 200 for a total of 300% cooldown. 10.5 seconds with a 25 uh, do you mean cooldown reduction what i'm trying to think of how what would the math be that by that be it's just it's just three times as fast meter max range there is also a 1.5 second lingering effect if you step outside of kiriko's kitsune rush to my eyes there seem to be two main uses to either run it down main or to run a flank running it down main is the simpler and more obvious choice your movement becomes incredibly elusive your dps is drastically increased yeah thanks exactly to the fire rate, reload, yeah. And cooldown reduction, and the speed boost ensures that the enemy team will certainly have a tough time running away from your kitsune rush just imagine this ultimate on a map like coliseo with a very long midsection and it's basically a guaranteed team fight win <laughs> This guy uses the first in-game example of it, and he does it in an empty custom game by himself shooting the wall. As long as you time your Kitsune Rush with your team's aggression. An additional but key tip not, to this use of Kitsune not, Rush uh. is to try and use it when the enemy team are in open space. The reason for this is because enemies cannot run away from your Kitsune Rush as easily if they're in open space compared to them being around the corner. So for example, this Kitsune Rush on Lijang Night Market is good because the enemy team are in open space and therefore have to move some noticeable amount of distance to get to safety. Obviously, make sure you time Wow! We did it! We did it! The first time we are over nine minutes into the guide, and he finally gave me a gameplay and example. Kitsune Rush with your team's aggression in order to capitalize on this misplay by the enemy team. If you just pop Kitsune Rush by yourself and walk in forward, you're gonna feed. The other use of Kitsune Rush well, you in might feed, the flank seems to be quite understated, but frankly, I could see this being used in very split compositions to win key areas and flanks in the map. Think Route 66 third point attack by the Loi. Whilst you could argue that this isn't an optimal use of Kitsune Rush, you're much more likely to win the team fight if you win the I'm not gonna even say it again. This section of the map. Now onto the final section, being like playstyle, positioning, and composition. Now this is where it gets complex, so to help simplify the concepts down a bit, I have cut up Kiriko's playstyle under four subheadings, being the scout, rush, peel, or to control flanks and angles. Since I've already gone over scouting with the Lijiang Tower example, that leaves us with three options. Since controlling flanks and angles is the most important playstyle, regardless of what composition you play, I'll cover that first. As you can see, I have broken down the controlling flank section into three further parts, dueling, poking or supporting. Dueling is as simple as it seems. You take an angle, a DPS will likely duel you, and you rely on your mechanics in hitting headshots to win out that duel. You can see an example of this on Watchpoint Gibraltar Attack by the blue box. Poking is also pretty simple. Because your kunais have no fall off as Kiriko, and you have a teleport as an escape, you can literally just hold an angle and spam kunais at the beginning of fights. For example, on Route 66 first point, you could take the high ground, wait for your team to dive, and spam kunais in the meantime from your angle. Be sure to get closer though in the mid fight sure. to get more value out of your kit. Lastly, supporting just means supporting any DPS on an angle. I've already gone through this in prior examples like King's Row, but I will mention more examples in a minute. Now onto rushing and peeling. To help explain both these concepts, I'll use a top down view of Blizzard World first point attack. Say you're playing a very split comp, being Kiriko, Zen, Sombra, Genji, Diva. If you want to adapt the rush playstyle, you're gonna need Kitsune Rush. Here, you could teleport to your Zen, drop Kitsune Rush in mid, and push in deep with your Sombra and Genji, pincering from behind. Alternatively, with the peening playstyle, say your Zen gets hacked by the enemy Sombra. You could teleport to your Zen, drop your protection Suzu, and he lives. Also note the playstyle of controlling flanks also applies here. Oh, this is, you could this is, this is, this poking is from range, tricky. You could support your Sombra from afar or teleport to her if she needs help, or you could go in very aggressively, looking to duel the enemy team and teleport straight out. Again, At the very least, have some arrows or something here. This this is tough to follow, to be honest with you. Referring to the three subpoints of Kiriko, controlling flanks and angles. This very example shows why Kiriko is so hard to play and why this guide was so hard to make. You're such a flexible and situational hero that you have so many options to choose from and each will come down to how each teamfight plays out. Before I end off, I'll briefly touch on positioning, of which there are four simple rules taken from Nata OW. The first is to have cover or a corner, which you clearly do in this example. The second is to have line of sight, which you also have both onto your team and onto the enemy team. This is super important in order to keep a high level of awareness so you can choose one of the many options you have, whether it be peeling, controlling flanks, okay. rushing, 
etc. The third rule is to have distance from angles. This just means that you have enough distance from flanks that you can react to threats coming onto you like an enemy Genji. The last rule is to have defensive or aggressive rotational options. So a defensive option would be teleporting to your Zen and an aggressive option would be to teleport to your Sombra or to drop down and duel. Anyways, I really hope this guide explained how many flexible playstyles Kiriko can have. I don't know chat, I don't know. So it's a beefed, obviously. Can I do the can I do the can I do the thing? No. Did I do it? Did I do it? Did I do it? I forget what the hotkey is, chat. Shoot. He's <laughs> a good guy. No, I, I, do, I do think he got it right. But I think in terms of the actual guide itself, for the cager level that we'd often get, it's it's a little it's a little low. I, and I get that it's like it's a little bit of a rush to get these guides out. You know what I'm saying? To to, to, to strike the iron while it's hot. You know what I'm saying? But this is not anywhere near close to being one of the better cager guides. Not even the top half, I would say. Um, the playstyle is is was good enough. A lot of the, the information was mostly good enough, I think. I think the one thing for me was like, oh, you can aggressively TP, but then that wasn't really explained how and why. And, and, and like, you could have literally done that in like 10 seconds. And, and, and I'm not saying like go on and on and on because the guide was already long enough as it was. Um, but the examples were not good um, with the, the stat banana. That really took a lot away from many, many, many points. And even if you have to use stat banana for some of the more complex examples, like the last one, of course, it could have been visually drawn better, um, with whether it's with arrows, whether it's with... It was very visually dull and hard to track, and I, I, I knew what he was talking about, and it was still hard for me to track. Um, good information, not the best guide. Certainly not the best guide that we've seen from Kager. Um, we can do better. We can do better. Um, Let's actually let's actually let's 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 take let's do one thing. So before I end stream, there's two things I wanted to talk about. Okay, and this is going to be pretty interesting. I think I should hope. So let's 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 pull up the Microsoft Paint and let's get to work. Okay. So this is going to be very general information stuff. Um, do I need to move my face cam? I hate that it's always on the side there. Uh, there we go. Wait, no, that's not what I want. Hang on, hang on. Maybe I have to move my face cam because it's going to get in the way. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's just do this. <clears throat> I did do the giveaway for the coaching sessions. And I will announce it in Discord after stream is done. <clears throat> I want to thank everybody for the feedback I got, by the way. Feedback was monumentally helpful. In fact, Neo Tifa will back me up. We were in a voice call as a couple of the, a couple of the mods last night for like two hours, over two hours, discussing all the feedback and getting a plan out. So I really, really, really appreciated you guys' feedback. It was super, super helpful. Um, and I think we got some really good ideas and some some stuff that we'll do. We got long term, short term, medium term, some some potential ideas. It was awesome. So I thank you guys so so much. You guys don't have any idea how much it means to me that you guys took the time to do that. I really really appreciated that. Two things I want to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about for a while. Here's the question: Why do people stagger? That's that's the topic number one. Why do people stagger? I don't know why it's this font, but we'll roll with it. And then the second one is volume tanking equals, there's no equals, is like weight lifting. Okay, I want you to get those two things in your head for just a second, because they're, they're gonna be very important. So let's start with the first one. Why do people stagger? Well, let me tell you, chat. We, especially nowadays, are entering an age where I think people's attention spans have shortened down a little bit. Um, as a YouTube content creator, I was speaking with a very known, well-known YouTube content creator with about 300,000 subscribers. And he was telling me 
that he's noticed that if you don't hook viewers oftentimes in the first 10 to 15 seconds anymore, then oftentimes then you've lost them. So you have lost the viewer. I'm not saying everybody. I'm not even saying necessarily most people, but a lot of people, a lot of viewers really struggle with retention very fast. Now you can blame that on, you know, TikTok, video games, social media, Reddit, Twitter, refreshing your feed over and over and over again. I mean, you could even see this in social media now where nobody has a permanent feed anymore. Everybody's feed is constantly updating. If you refresh Twitter, you'll see new things. You might like, or you might follow, or your person like this, or so-and-so follows. Do you notice that they throw extra stuff in your Twitter feed that's, I mean, most of my Twitter feed is not even people that I follow anymore because I don't follow that many people. So it has to fill up with random crap. So anyway, viewer attention span, being able to stay focused, all that kind of stuff is, is tough for people, okay? And maybe it's, it's tougher. So what happens in a game like Overwatch is you have a lot going on, right? You've got bang, 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 bash, square, 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 square. <whistles> zoom, 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 right? It's an extremely chaotic game, right? By any parameter, right? I mean, I've, I've not played every first person shooter but i've played a lot of them and overwatch is probably the most visually intensive and chaotic of all of them especially mid team fight it's unbelievably chaotic which means you need the ability to not stay focused but to be constantly shifting your focus from point a to point b to point c to point d to point a to point e it's peripheral awareness it's chaos it's 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 staying calm in the insanity and so there's a lot going on your brain is engaged in a million different directions now, why people stagger is an interesting question because Overwatch is a game like most games and like any other games in team fights where you have these peaks of action, right? So action over time, we'll just say action. And then we'll just, we'll, we'll just leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll action over time and then action over time where you have moments where the action's really low and the moments where the action's really intense and the moments where the action's really low and the moments where the action's really intense. And you could graph this out as being like poke phase or brawl phase or the middle of the fight. It doesn't really matter how you want to define it. But the tricky thing with Overwatch is that even though it is as chaotic as any other game, more than chaotic than most, during the lulls, it's as dull as any other game, right? There's nothing, like when you're between fights as Overwatch, you know, outside of like spamming voice lines or jumping around, pretty much what any other game would do during these lulls. And this is the catch. People don't like doing nothing. People do not like doing nothing. Nothing sucks, nothing is boring. So what? here's what happens. Let me tell you exactly what happens. It is a five versus five game. And unfortunately, your tank feeds, he jumps in and feeds, trolls the lobby, and now it is not a 5v5, it is a 4v5. So then what's the best course of action for everybody else if you're attacking, let's say? Well, the best course of action is for you to do nothing. And not just figuratively nothing, but quite literally nothing. It is not to peek, it is not to poke, especially versus certain compositions. Like let's say the enemy composition has a Zenyatta or a Widowmaker or a, or a Sombra or some way of getting a pick. If you don't do nothing, then the risk of them getting another pick is even higher. Why? Because there's no longer five versus five and it's now a four versus five. So the risk of poking is now infinitely higher, not infinitely, but higher because five of those resources are not being split on five targets they are now being focused on four you see so now you get picked let's say your winston jumps in and fight feeds the enemy widowmaker gets a kill on the winston and then the winston dies and then your zenyatta instead of resetting tries to go for a right click on the diva and then the widowmaker gets another kill and then now you have three let's actually keep the theme here with the color and again the question is is what is the best thing that you can do 
Nothing. You need to get out and hide. Exactly. You, yeah, in the sense that you get out. You get back. You hold. With a, I mean, it depends on the circumstance, right? Maybe you get back. Maybe you hide behind cover. Maybe you completely disengage. Maybe you just wait and you don't push forward. It depends. Well, people don't like doing that. So then your Hanzo looks for a pot shot. The enemy Zenyatta hits a right click, gets him into one HP, and now you have two. Oh, but wait, your your Winston's back. You don't have you don't have two. You have three again. Nice guys, your Winston's back. Well, what do you think that your Winston might do? Well, your Winston is probably going to look for a jump. Maybe he's not going to go in aggressively. Maybe he's thinking, oh, I can't go in aggressively because we're down a few, but I'm going to jump the front line. He jumps the front line. They break his bubble. They rock him. He dies. So now you have... Oh, no, wait, just kidding. Your Zenyatta is respawned, so you're back at three again, right? And you see my point, chat? This is what happens. This is how snowballs occur. The problem is, is not that people don't understand that staggering is bad. Everybody knows that staggering is bad, but people don't understand what the definition of staggering is. Everybody knows that if it's a three versus five, or everybody should know, that your Winston jumping in deep is a feed. But what people don't understand that your Winston doing anything is probably a feed. And that's the catch. The worst staggers are the what? I didn't know they would push up like that. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought that like I thought I'd be safe here. Oh no. Look what? Oh, how did the Zen dude? That's so unlucky. The Zen hit a right click, dude. Like how? Like what are the odds? Do you see what I'm saying? It's that like surprise. Wait, they're taking space, they're pushing up. That's normally a very safe play. Why is it no longer safe anymore? You're down a bunch. The enemy's resources are not split as much. They are taking a space. And so what would have been safe in a 3v5 or a 4v5 or a 5v5 is probably no longer safe anymore. And so what ends up happening is that people's definition of safe isn't good enough what is safe when the enemy team is here might be here right this is safe right here but then if you get picked and the enemy team walks forward this position is probably no longer safe and the problem is where people struggle with this is that they not only misunderstand this but they can't fight the urge to just peek for a little bit of damage. That D.Va just wants to just do a little bit more, you know? The Ana just, the Zen just wants to fish for that right click or the, or the Widowmaker just, maybe, maybe I can catch somebody, right? And that's where staggers happen. Even something as simple as a Widowmaker versus Widowmaker duel, which is, feels almost completely naked. Like there's, it's just Widow versus Widow. Surely if the, in, if let's say this guy has five and this guy has four, it doesn't really matter. It's a Widow duel, right? Wrong. If this Widow has a tank that can pressure the other Widow, even just a little bit, if this Widow has a Mercy that the other Widow doesn't have, if this Widow has a Zenyatta, if this Widow has a Tracer that's harassing the Widowmaker just a tiny bit, distracting her a tiny bit, any sort of advantage, man advantage, can be exploited. And that's how it happens. I've seen a lot of people also hide and stall even further because they think people won't find them. Right. This is why people stagger. Because the definition of safe shifts and people just can't do nothing for a period of time. They have to do something and then that's what ends up happening. Another story. So let me be very clear. I am not a personal trainer. I've lifted for a long period of time. So a lot of the, what I know is just off of my own experience. Take a little bit of what I say with a grain of salt. At least non-Overwatch matters. Strength training 
is not the same as hypertrophy training. Hypertrophy training is all about burning the muscles, tearing them up, causing damage. Strength training is about putting as much weight on the bar or on the dumbbell and lifting it up. And what matters with strength training is something called volume, okay? So where is our little, I wanna get off of text here. Yeah, okay. So what matters is volume, okay? Volume. And volume is simply weight times reps. And then times sets, obviously, right? Times sets. So in other words, if I want to get stronger, I need to lift heavy, and I need to lift heavy often, and I need to lift heavy for many sets. Yeah, I need to make sure this is an X. Weight plus, like I should do, this is another X as well. You, you get what I'm saying, okay? The danger with new noobs when it comes to strength training, if they're training for strength chat, not necessarily for muscle growth, just for strength, is that they're gonna put on 100 pounds on the bar, let's just say, it doesn't really matter what the lift is, and they're going to go to failure. In other words, they are going to lift as that bar as many times as they can, over and over and over and over and over again until they can't lift it anymore. They literally can't do it a single sink. Let's say they do eight repetitions, right? Now, this is the problem with training to failure for strength training. Now, this is now those, not many of you guys may lift in chat, but this is actually really important to understand tanking in Overwatch. If I were to go for as many repetitions as I possibly can, let's say it's eight, and I couldn't do a single one more, and then I were to rest for, let's say, three minutes, two or three minutes, okay? And I were to do the exact same thing again, how many reps do you think I could get the second time? This is the really important question. What do you guys think? Six. Usually less. Yeah. Not eight again for certain. Now, if you're a new lifter, a brand new lifter, a lot of times brand new lifters often don't have like the, they, they can't really go to failure. They struggle with that. So like, let's just say that you're more of an experienced lifter. Okay. So it definitely depends on the experience of a lifter. Strong, better lifters can push to that max um, better. Same thing with, with, with experienced sprinters, right? So like, let's say you go literally as hard as you can and you, and you really do push yourself to the limit. This will be six or five or even four. And again, you go to failure. And chat, do you see where this is going? Third set, where do you think we're getting? Fourth set, where do you think we're going? Do you see? And what ends up happening is you gas yourself out. You gas yourself out. You run out of gas in the tank. And then what ends up happening is, remember, volume is what matters. So if you get eight reps here, five reps here, four reps here, and then three, and you've only done four sets, 13, 17, 20. 20 reps total. Effort doesn't matter that much. It's the volume. So 20 reps. Now, let's reimagine the situation with somebody that knows a little bit better of what they're doing. They're a little bit smarter. So instead of going to failure, they go close to failure. Close to failure. And what might that look like, chat? What might that look like? Not eight reps. Maybe six. Next set. Do you know what you could do on the next set? Aiming again for close to failure. Six. Next set. 
six. Next set, six. Now this one, they would get gradually harder, but you could do six. And maybe on your last set, you max out, right? Maybe you push to seven or that last six is really hard. Do you see? Now, if we add up the reps here, six plus six plus six plus six, Ah, now think about this. If you're training for raw strength, you oftentimes do not go to failure, especially early in the set, because you want to maintain, you don't want to peak, because when you cross a certain threshold, you trash yourself to the point to where you're not able to push yourself hard enough for the rest of the workout, and you lose raw volume. Now, Congratulations, you guys hopefully learned a little something about strength training, okay? Now, the real question is, why the heck does this matter? Where well, this is an Overwatch educational stream. So then, why does this matter? And it's actually a very, very important question. And I want you to look back at the title and tell me why it matters, as I tediously erase when I really could just be brushing. No. Can I do this? No, 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 no. No, what? Color, I guess I have to change color one. That's annoying. I'm not gonna even try. <sighs> shut up, shut up, shut up. I want you guys to think about it. So here's a question for Tank. If you're playing Tank, what is your job? And I'm not making really a differentiation between off tank or main tank here. Just give me, just give me the easy, the, the, the Spark Notes version of what a tank actually does as I, again, tediously make space here. You create space, right. Wait, what? Why did it undo everything? <laughs> Okay, we're just gonna start with a new with a new one. Okay. You create space. If I'm Winston and I jump heavily, hard, kill into the middle of the enemy back line every single time. I play 100% to create as much space as I possibly can, as much threat as I possibly can right now. What's the problem? Do you see what I'm saying? You're going to max out and you're going to die. Now, will you create a lot of space? Yes. But tanking in Overwatch is a lot like volume and lifting. It's about what is the most weight I can lift, the most space I can create without dying so I can do it for multiple sets. Do you see? The risk is that if you go too hard, then there will be no multiple sets. It will be one big burst of pressure, and then that's it. And unlike lifting, if you go to failure as tank on your first dive, you there will be no second set. There will be no third set. There will be no fourth set. It will be one and done. And even if you get uh, 12 reps, <laughs> of space, what is better? 12 reps of space or nine reps times two? Do you see?